and welcome to the last part of the IE tutorial. So in this stage, I want to talk a bit about how you can, for example, bake this down into simple plane shapes. So here I have my IV tool as before. I have like our base setup that, have, that we have been using. And what I want to do next is either create a new IV tool or we can just uh, change our inputs. So let's just grab a basic box here and plug it in. So we have a shape like so. And let's just make it uh, a bit something like so. So I have a quite interesting shape. So let me view the sides here. And I now want to capture this and render this into like a simple plane. Because of course a plane will be way cheaper to render than actually uh, this higher pound, this higher count of polygons. So once we have this, uh, we're going to use something which is called the Maps uh, Baker. So make sure you have the lab tools installed. For this to work, what we need is our high poly and a low poly. So for our low poly, we need to just place a grid. So here, a simple grid. And of course, this grid needs to be the size of this object. So if we rotate it like so, we probably, of course, need to make it a lot smaller. Like so. So that looks pretty good to me. And we can also make it this like a square shape. So let's say four by four. Maybe like four point two. Four point two. Like you don't necessarily have to make it a square shape, but it's always easier to do that with game engine stuff. So so we have now this grid. And we also need to give this a uh, grid and unwrap. And in this case, I'm just going to use the uh, projector. So projector, UV projecting. And we can just rotate it like so. But it's probably better to just click initialize here. And to double check it's actually being placed correctly, I'm going to place a quick shading node. And it's placed correctly. So we can just clearly see that it like the number A2 and so on, that they are not reversed. Um, so that's correct. So this is my low poly. Then my high poly is of course this IV system. So now we are having this low poly plane we will be capturing this high poly IV detail. So let's now go here and check our settings. So this is our output directory. Uh, you can change this to whatever folder. This is then the resolution. I think 1K is good enough for this. Then we have our tracing mode, and it's also a good idea to visualize the caging. So this is how far my capturing area is. So if your capturing area is somewhere like so, that means that these branches will not be a uh, part of the texture. So in my case, it's actually good enough for now. Then we go into the interesting part where we're actually going to generate the textures. So we can also here, first of all, do a diffuse map. So let's try to get our diffuse here. So when we go back to our IV, we want to actually see how it actually was, for example, in the game engine with our actual texture. To do that, we can use a quick uh, material net. You can also create an actual material network, but in this case, it's not really needed to build that whole system. So we're going to say quick material node. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to switch to the original materials and just click OK. Then in here, what I want to do now is bring in my texture for the base color. And I'm also probably going to then use opacity since opacity is important here. You can also plug in other textures if you want to, but those are the two maps I'm, I'm going to use. So with those two plugged in, you can see that this is working. I have now my leaves as it should be. There is some weird color and that is also coming from the vertex color. So if you don't want to see that, we can just simply override the vertex color here. And then we have like a proper material. Also interesting is we actually had two materials in Unreal, so we can also do that here. So in our tool itself, it might be interesting to add a group node for branches and a group node for IV. So after we done our calculation of the tool, we still can we still can specifically grab only, for example, the ivy, the leaves, or we can, uh, for example, only grab the branches part of that. 
So these are quite interesting to add as well. So here we can, for example, say only texture here, the group of the IV part. So I have that now. And then I can do another quick shade node. So quick shading, uh, or that's actually not needed because this is a multi-parameter. So we can just click a plus icon here. And then we can say to add only to the branches to add like a brown color. Or if, if you have like some proper texturing, of course, I can just load in the texture. I'm just going to make it look like a subtle uh, branch color here. And we can just plug it in over here. And now we're going to render out our diffuse. And with that all set, let's just click render. So you can go in your folder and search for it. What we can also do is we can actually use the preview channel. So we can copy paste the diffuse name and paste it in the preview channel. And it will actually now preview uh, our texture. So you can see that this is actually working really well. So we had our branches and also we had, so we have our IV and our branches. And so what we can maybe tweak here is the resolution is a bit on the lower side, I would say, especially since we are actually capturing a quite a high amount of leaves so it's a balance you have to find on, on on that so it's probably recommended to later on uh have a higher amount what we also want to do is we actually want to go into advanced options and we want to enable here a uh, trace after the opacity mapping so since we are using opacity maps it will actually as you could see like create like these weird uh colors here because this is outside of the opacity map. So we need to enable this option and click on re-render. And I'm currently not seeing it in my viewport, but I'm just gonna simply grab here uh, the texture itself. It will also be easier for me to just zoom in on it. So now we can actually see that we are actually now taking in account of the opacity of this leaf itself. So for the branches, I found out uh, more specifically why the color was not uh, as I was expecting. So in, in our material, it actually prefers to use a texture than using the tint value. So also make sure you have a texture for both of them. So I have a texture for my branches and for my IV. So it's recommended doing that. So when you render this out again, you actually have a, a result as this, as expected. So now we just have a simple plane uh, where we picked out that information. So we can make multiple versions out of this. I can now just quickly go in my tool and just go to my seed value and play around with that. And I can now just click render again, have another variation, click render again, have another variation. So maybe in this situation, they're maybe too dense. So we can always like lower this a bit in this density scale. Uh, we can also make my object smaller. So we don't have that much branches going on. So it's all up to you on how we can uh, make variation and make this more interesting. What you can also do is you can combine sort of like the two things uh, is you can, for example, uh, grab what we have here and for example, do a clip. So we can quickly start uh, extracting some interesting details at the lower poly count. So for example, maybe something uh, like this. And we can then, uh, for example, combine this with our plane here. So as you can see, we are still faking some of that IV field there. And we have then these things and maybe just do a transform quickly and transform this on the shape. So it should match pretty well with what we have since we are just baking down the. So you can see that we can still, if we have some budgets, like play around with some information here. But if you still want to give some 3D effect on this, you can do something like that. Uh, maybe I can just grab it from here. So we have like uh, the branches. So you can see that like this sort of also works as well to sort of like try to add some optimization pass and still have some 3D feeling. There are multiple ways on how you can experiment with this. Like this can be a quite broad topic on how to create like the perfect foliage uh, for a scene. Uh, but in the future, if we are having things like Nanite, this might become more interesting to use and have higher poly counts. So I want to round up this video here. So what I basically wanted to show you is just baking down. That was the main point that I want to show you here is how can I bake something that's a bit more complicated 
into just like a simple image and then in a game engine i can just use this so i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching